Amazing Arctic Animals by Jackie Glassman. The chilliest place on earth. Grab your hat and scarf, pull on your boots and mittens. You are about to enter one of the chilliest places on earth, the Arctic. Home to the North Pole, the Arctic is a very cold place. It is made up of ice-covered sea and a cold, treeless desert. The treeless desert is called the tundra. In the Arctic, the winter lasts for six months. That's half the year. Even in summertime, it's chilly in the Arctic. Arctic winters are dark. That's because the winter, in the winter, the northern part of the earth tilts away from the sun. Can you imagine six months without any winter? Lots of animals visit the Arctic during the summer. Bull, birds called terns fly here from as far away as the Antarctic. That's on the other side of the world. Thousands of deer called caribou walk to the tundra from the Arctic's far forests. But only a few animals dare to stay for the long cold winter. Most return to warmer places. The brave animals that stay all year have special ways to survive cold Arctic winters. These ways are called adaptations. Arctic birds are covered from head to toe in a snowsuit of feathers. A soft layer next to their skin called down keeps them warm. Outer feathers keep them dry. Arctic animals keep warm because they have lots of thick fur. Their fur coats keep them warm the same way wearing a coat keeps you warm when it's cold outside. Some an Arctic animals, like whales, have a thick layer of fat underneath their skin. This fat is called blubber. Blubber keeps animals warm, even when they swim in the icy Arctic Ocean. Fur, fat, and feathers are just a few of the Arctic animals' adaptations. Each animal has its own special way of living in one of the cold in the coldest place on earth. Who are these creatures and how do they adapt to the heart, harsh arctic winter? Let's find out. By land. Who is the largest land living animal in the arctic? The polar bear. He loves to swim in the freezing water and roll in the snow. His big furry coat and thick layer of fat keep him nice and warm. The polar bear is a great hunter. He has very strong paws. He can kill a seal with just one swat. Seals are the polar bear's favorite dinner. The polar bear's wide paws help him walk on the snow without sinking in. His furry soles help keep him from slipping on the ice. The sly Arctic fox is hard to see. In winter, her gray-brown coat turns thick and white to match the snow. Watch as she quietly follows a polar bear to steal his kill. The Arctic fox doesn't mind the cold. Her small furry body and her tiny ears keep in body heat. Her bushy tail wraps around her like a blanket when she sleeps. And it has some more information about the Arctic seal. Arctic hares huddle together to stay warm. Oh no, here comes a wolf. The hares quickly hop away. The Arctic hare has big feet. These big feet act like snowshoes. 
They help the hairs run on top of the snow without falling in. This makes it easy for them to get away from predators. Here comes the huge musk ox. His long furry coat keeps him cozy and warm. Underneath all that hair is a layer of wool to keep out the cold Arctic air. When a wolf is near, the protective musk, musk oxen make a ring around their calves with horns facing out. They are ready to charge the enemy. Don't be scared of the big bad wolf. She only hunts to get food. She almost never attacks people. Good eyes and a strong sense of smell help the wolf hunt for prey. Baby Arctic wolves can't see or hear. They rely on their mother to feed and to protect them. By sea, splash. The ringed seal dives into the icy cold sea. A thick layer of blubber, blubber keeps him warm. This fat makes up almost half of his weight. The seal can stay underwater for almost an hour without even taking a breath. His big round eyes help him see in dark water. Who is the giant of the sea with teeth as long as your arms? The walrus, of course. The walrus's two big teeth are called tusks. The walrus hooks her tusks into the ice to pull herself out of the water. That is why she is nicknamed the tooth walker. The walrus uses her whiskers to feel for clams on the ocean floor. A hungry wal walrus can eat up to 6,000 clams a day. Walruses like to stay close to one another. Huddling together keeps them warm. As a group, they protect their babies from polar bears and killer whales. There is nothing fishy about whales. That's because they are at mammals. To breathe, they must come up for air. Whales take in air through small holes at the top of their heads. Nicknamed sea canaries, beluga whales love to sing. They use sound to talk to one another and to find prey. By air. Do you see a white feathered bird hiding in the snow? That's a ptarmigan. And it shows the pronunciation. He is hiding from his enemies. When spring comes, the ptarmigan's feathers change color. Now they are brown, yellow, and white to match the grasses and the melting snow. Can you find this sneaky bird now? Hoo -hoo! Who has feathers from nose to toes? The snowy owl. Her feathery snowsuit protects her from the chilly Arctic winds. Flying high in the sky, the snowy owl spots prey far below. She has very good eyesight and hearing. Whoosh! She swoops down, grabs dinner with her sharp curved claws and brings it back to her nest. Other animals hide in fear when the mighty 
Jurful, Jural Falcon comes near. His strong talons or claws and powerful eyesight make it a great hunter. The Jurfalcon is so fast he can match a bird, catch a bird in mid-flight. He knocks down his prey with his powerful beak. Springtime! After months of darkness, the sun finally begins to rise over the Arctic. As ice on the tundra melts, plants begin to grow and insect eggs hatch. Suddenly, there is lots of food for everyone. Animal visitors from faraway places fly and walk many miles to come and enjoy the tundra's feast. Herds of caribou make the long journey from the Arctic forests. It's the longest migration made by any land animal. On the way, they give birth to new calves. When they finally reach the tundra, caribou eat everything in sight. When winter comes, their food is scarce. The fat stored in their bodies gives them needed ener energy. Here come the terns. They may be small, but these strong birds fly all the way from Antarctic. That's over 12,000 miles. Here on a sunny tundra, they make their nests and raise their babies. In the fall, the terns will fly back halfway across the world. They will arrive in the Antarctic, the other pole of the earth, just as the sun is rising there. Summer in the Arctic is short. Soon the sun will set and the dark chill of winter will return. <laughs>